Come on, let's take a closer look. Hello, and thanks for slipping some time with me today. In this episode, we are going to do some stuff on this 1990 Eel Talon all-wheel drive TSI. Just so you know, I'm the original owner of this car. Uh, it's been with me since 1990. I bought it new then, and uh, kind of gives my age away a little bit as well, perhaps. But I was pretty young when I bought it. Um, Basically, this car, I did some payments on it back then. You think interest rates are high now? This was 14 and 3 quarter percent back then for the loan that I got, and I thought that was a good deal because interest rates were absolutely insane then. If we seen what people are complaining about now back then, we would have laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. So this car has been through a lot, a lot of my life experiences with me, and I've met a lot of good people because of it. On top of that, um, so when I bought it in 1990, nobody really knew what these cars could do or what they're capable of until we started playing with them. And, and a lot of us did start playing with them. Uh, basically, it's had a seven year warranty. So I waited for seven years to be done. And then I started doing some modifications, which some people already were starting that already uh, back in the mid 90s about is when it started. So basically, a lot of us were trying to make these fast, just like other cars from the 90s. And figuring out how to do that and what's going to break and things did break and how to make them not break how to make them faster you know basically they were a 15 second car just maybe low 14s if you could really really drive but you had to have a really good track and a really good driver and a good day but uh yeah eventually we were getting down you know to the 14 13 12 etc you get the drill this car has been through a lot of changes with me as far as the power plant and electronics and how to make it fast uh, the last version it has is probably, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. And that's the way it sits today. And it's pretty bulletproof. Basically what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the things I've done with it or some of the electronics that was, um, and think of back in 2005, six, when I did this, it was pretty advanced back then. I don't know anybody who actually had in car tuning like I did on here, uh, at the time with the way I had it. People had laptops obviously on their seats and had little platforms and stuff like that. And you know, there was a fast and furious stuff going on where I don't think people were doing like they did in the movies where on the, on the fly they were going down the track and you know, what's happened to be 10 seconds was taking two minutes to run. But uh, we all enjoyed kind of the movie and kind of didn't, didn't at the time. But anyway, I'll show you what I did and try to go back to that time in 2005, 2006, if you had seen someone do this. So I had a lot of attention when I went to the track on the, on, in those days. And it was really handy for when I was trying to tune in between races at the track. And also those times that I happened to be driving in Mexico on the street. So we're going to take you in here, have a look and show you what's wrong. And then I'll show you kind of some of the stuff that I've, how it all hides back in the back of the car and you'll end up uh, experiencing kind of what we did back then just uh, to be innovative and to make it work and to make it look good so the goal of this car back then by the way was to be on the street tires it has full weight with a subwoofer in stereo the whole deal i think it weighed 3400 pounds if i remember with me in it at the time when i weighed and i wanted to be a true low 11 second car on the street all the time which back then was pretty fast for any car. It didn't matter what it had for an engine. That was very, very fast. Nowadays, 
maybe not as much. I still think it's pretty fast. It's enough for me even today. Um, but anyway, that's what it was back in those days. So let's, uh, let's take you in here and show you what's going on or what's not going on. I'll show you inside and show you what's different than what a lot of other people did back then. Uh, basically, this is it. This is a setup. There's a secret that you're uh, going to know about that I had in the day. Not, not pretty common now what you can do now with this stuff, but back then this was this was kind of state-of-the-art stuff. So, uh, so for gauges, had fuel pressure. I actually logged that, tapped that into uh, DSM link or ECM link. Um, had an EGT gauge, which back in the day before we had uh, actual wideband air fuel ratio O2 sensors, we had narrow band, so we really relied on this, actually. I still rely on it somewhat. I like to know what's going on with my exhaust heat. Ideally, you'd have them in each exhaust port, but I just put it in the collector in the manifold uh, up in front there. So that's that. Um, yeah, so a couple other gauges here that we had, and I'll show you part of the problem here. I'm gonna just light it up here. Okay, you can see it doesn't light up. These lit up. That's part of the problem that I got to work on today. I've got uh, air fuel ratio wideband now, obviously, and a electronic boost control, the true boost here. Works great, all plumbed into the logging software as well. Uh, old school radio. But this is a VGA, it might be an XVGA actually, um, in dash touchscreen monitor. And this basically goes to a laptop back in the back there. And uh, I'll show that to you when I get there. But uh, so I basically had touchscreen on here, full Windows. It was Windows XP, that's old school, but I uh, had Windows XP, could do my ECM link on the fly. The track didn't care about me having my laptop on the seat belt or something like that, like they didn't like. And some people had little stands and stuff. But I had this as part of the car, basically. On top of it, I had GPS, um, basically just added applications uh, that you had back then. Now, GPS, I think I had my Microsoft Tips and Trips and Trips, I think it was. Trips and Tips. Anyway, that was pretty new back then um, to have GPS on board in a car like that. My music, had my music library going into my auxiliary input in the, in the old school. I mean, it's still you know 2000 based sony deck that was looking for a vintage look which i wanted to match this car somewhat um but uh yeah it uh had the auxiliary input for my audio source based on this i had i could run video um had a camera here as well so i could have on, on inboard or in in cab i guess when i did my racing which actually shot what i was going as we're here really well I uh, could see all my gauges, what's going on. I could kind of almost match it up with my logs. Um, and uh, also, to tell you how old school this is, have you seen this in a long time? Probably some of you have, but not that recently. So yeah, and uh, rather than mixed tapes, I was you know early adopter of what's called playlists on my little uh, CD thing there. So yeah, that uh, was all part of that. So. This tucked away, as I showed you, and uh, when I wanted it. It was kind of funny when I raced. Um, you'd see this kind of do this when I do launched um, and kind of flop around. Uh, it was kind of cool anyway. So what's going on with the problem right now is that this isn't coming on. This uh, isn't coming on, which I know is on the same fuse as my inverter, I realize now. Um, this turns on the inverter that's back there to run the laptop. This turns on the laptop. This tells me that I got 110 going to the laptop. Um, and that that wall was just before my, uh, my security system that's on the car. So we're gonna troubleshoot basically what's going on today so we can get this going and just show you a little bit more of what it is. Also to help along, I've got a wireless keyboard, which this was huge back then, wireless keyboards in 2005. Very rare, very rare back then. Had a total mouse control here, a uh, little joystick as well, and uh, worked really good into that. So again, this was pretty state-of-the-art back in 2005. Not so much anymore, but uh, back then it was pretty cool. 
still pretty cool, but pretty normal now. I'm bringing you in here just uh, what some of this wiring looks like that I did. A lot of wiring. Made a little terminal strip here for actually the ECU inputs so that it's really easy if I, because I ended up putting a lot of different inputs in over the years into ECM Link. So I decided I'll bring them out here and then it's just easier to get at them rather than trying to go in the back of the connectors all the time and soldering, desoldering, cutting, wires getting shorter, etc. So I did this. So that was something that uh, I think people started doing as well back then. But uh, I do remember doing that just to make things a little easier and then I've got them kind of all labeled and stuff. Yeah, even the crossovers for the speakers, full stereo in this system. So you can see my serial and cable. You can get in there. My serial basically cable going to my laptop in the back and also my VGA uh, going to the monitor there that I have in the front from the from the laptop as well. So yeah, I've got uh, I've got a short right now or something going on that's blowing the fuse, I think. So let's figure out what's going on there. It might not actually be the battery or the inverter, but we're gonna figure it out. And uh, I've got a bit to search because it's blowing a fuse, the main fuse that's connecting a few things here um, that's going back as well. I think it's this white wire down there. So laptop and the inverter that I talked about is actually in the hatch or underneath everything. And if you open this up, like I said, it's got a full sub. Some old school stuff here, but it works well. Another thing that uh, I did, because sometimes I would take this sub and I'd just bypass it and use the, the deck power for the speakers. So I had a little cable here and I took this out and I could bypass everything with this. And uh, they were labeled basically where I had to plug in. I had a little uh, junction box here that I'll, when I get more light, I'll show you what I got in there and you can see it. Um, let me actually get more light. Hang on. If you look in there, oh, she's dusty. Anyway, you can see how I got everything labeled. Um, I even had, because I have an inverter, I could always plug in AC there if I wanted to. Um, I had USB charging port back there, which I had people to track actually charge stuff uh, that they had. Um, that was a pretty big deal back then. Nobody was doing that at all because USB was just kind of getting going as far as portable stuff and that. Um, yeah, so it's all pretty cool. But uh, we gotta get, we gotta get under here basically to uh, get this box out first and then I can show you what's underneath. So let's start removing some of this stuff. Have a look at this sub sits in there there's a little spacer in here and i still have a full spare as you can see in here as well so i did preserve that on top of it i managed to do that with the sub this box is three quarter inch mdf and it's really heavy by the way it's uh it didn't it definitely didn't help on the the weight savings we're trying to help that anyway but uh anyway that was the goal was to have it a full street car with the tunes I used to be much younger when I did this, and I think I was a lot stronger. This thing's heavy. Okay. Okay. We got her. Oofda. Okay. Yeah, spare tire, and I even had a cooling fan put in for. Uh, for the laptop to vent and I got to take this kind of all off you can see where the seams are here once we do that we'll start with the dick and the spare tire out all right take this off so there's a better look at uh, this now that it's out in the open again there's my cheater cord that I can plug in to the main there and then that's the deck speaker output. 
and it basically bypasses the sub. That's what that is, a box for that. So anyway, um, it was pretty slick. So I could lose 100 pounds pretty fast from that bad boy over there. It, I'm sure it weighs more than 100 pounds, actually. I'm pretty out of breath, actually, from doing it. So let's get this off, and uh, then you can see what's underneath. It's been a long time, years since I've been underneath there. Now we'll take this out. You can see how this cuts out. Fits in here perfectly. Even a little notch for this little cable that rides over here. And we should be able to take it out here now. Here it is. I haven't had this off for many years. There we are. So let's just take it off. Oh, I forgot I got the fan. I even got a connector for the fan here. Right here for that fan. And then we can take it off. Presto. A lot going on in there. Okay. That's the inverter. Basically, I've got it wired in to the up there into the where I've said that fuse is. And uh, what's plugged in here? Well, basically, we have this is the laptop powering this laptop. And then over here, I've got an additional power coming in over to a spare power port right there in case we need it. Yeah, a lot of USB stuff going on. We got spare ports kind of going up there and to plug in. Um, right there, I guess, one spare port. And then I uh, also uh, wireless keyboard. Um, I know, yeah, I said the GPS stuff going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't. Oh, there is for the touch screen as well going up front. And there could be some other stuff that I'm forgetting because it's been way too long. Way too long. So, uh, also, been a, it's kind of a bracket here for the laptop to sit in. And uh, this is a connection for the actual switch to turn it on. Just wired right into the switch there. And uh, yeah, I got another other. I can't remember what else I got. See, there's the bracket there too. And I had to disable when the lid closed that it didn't shut off, which wasn't an issue. Uh, yeah. So also, notice how clean it is in here. Look how clean that is. Not rusted as well either. So I'm going to start disconnecting things and uh, see if I keep blowing fuses. Basically process elimination of what blowing the fuse and as I plug stuff back in, if it blows the fuse and we'll see what's going on. Don't know, but uh, let's get this sorted out and then maybe we can even get, go for a drive. That would be awesome. Uh, get it started. I haven't drove it all this summer and summer is just about over now. So, so yeah, lots of wires under here. I don't know if you've ever seen anything quite this wired up, but uh, it's done right, I think. Oh, yeah, I missed that too. So I, I actually put a, that's the switch up with that red switch I showed you up there. And uh, basically I wired it into the little switch here that turns this on. And that may make us that switch. So I soldered in wires into this little membrane switch. And uh, yeah, it all connects. I'm going to start with the process elimination and uh, I'm going to disconnect this white wire here to see if this is what's causing the short and I'll just kind of section it back and we'll see if we keep blowing fuses. Okay, that's undone from there. That eliminates two things, where this goes and that goes. I'm going to try and get you to see if this blows when I see it blow. Hopefully it doesn't, but we're going to find out here. Uh, I guess I need the key on, don't I? That would help. Let me put the key on. Okay, sorry about the noise, but let's uh, let's see if we can see it blow or not blow. Oh, that's good news. It didn't. So maybe we have gauges. Let's see if we got gauges. We have gauges. That means it's beyond that point that's blowing it up. Okay, so that wire that I undid. This is where the 12 volt comes in. I'm gonna put a probe on it here. And I should have 12 volts. And I do. So that's working. Now let's see if this wire going on here blows it, which means this is bad, which I wouldn't doubt. Or is this bad uh, going backwards, which it goes over there and I, 
I actually can't remember what this drives over there. It could be just a 12 volt supply that I have for some reason over there. I don't know, but uh, let's just see what happens when I uh, attach this and if it blows the fuse. And I'll know right away because those two gauges here will go dead on me. Let's try it out. Oh, so we'll start with this guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That shorted out. So it blew up right there. So we definitely got some problems going on over there. I can see those gauges are. The fuse is blown. So that tells me that this guy is bad. And uh, I think I got a spare one of these just because I was worried that uh, that might happen someday on this guy. So let's uh, let's uh, let's pull this out and see what's going on. Incidentally, I traced this wire back and it actually drove that little cooling fan that I had where it plugs in, which is this connector right there. And uh, so it's not even going anywhere right now. So it eliminated that. So yeah, it's gotta be that. And you can probably see that uh, that fuse is definitely blowing now. Garbage. Let's just show you, I'll do a comparison here. So this is a, another one that I have. You can see uh, when I measure across here, yeah, it's open. And then when I go here, like so, see, it shorts right out. So this guy's bad. I'm not sure, uh, weird that it shorted out. That means it could have really started a fire if it didn't have a fuse on it. So you should always have a fuse on these guys, um, which I know they suggest if you put these in, but uh, whatever happened, something happened. So what I gotta do, um, because I have that this switch going to the front like I showed you. I've got to take this little guy out and plumb it in here. So then that'll that'll work on there. So I'm gonna do that. But first, maybe I'll just test this before I do anything to make sure it uh, it works in there the way it's supposed to. Okay, I'm gonna manually turn it on here with the button. Oh, see we got power. Nothing shorting out. Keys on obviously. Um, and uh, just try to put this out for you. So that basically shows the voltage in and uh, that shows at 115 out. So this is working. Nothing's busting or going wrong here. Um, gauges are still on, so I think we got it. You can see how this light's on now that says that there's power, um, which is my indicator. Now let's see if I can even turn the laptop on, which is basically gotta hold this in this green one, hold it down, and then I let go. Oh, there it is. Now, that's beeping because I think I got a low battery in the front, and that's normally what happens, but this is going on, so I have a feeling the, uh-oh, something fell. Anyway, um, I have a feeling that the battery in this is dead but uh, it should be run over the 15 volts. Oh, here we are. See, oh, we're, uh, we're going in right now. So it's saying, uh, press F1 to resume, F2 to set up. I need to uh, put a battery in this perhaps and get this going because I don't have uh, a way to hit an F1 to resume right now. So anyway, we've got a screen. So that beeping is quite no noisy. Let's uh, get things fixed up and uh, then I can show you how this is all gonna work when it's hopefully all back together. So there it is apart. You can see the switch here. It went to the front. Yeah, just two wires soldered in into this connector. And then I plug into that connector, that switch that's in the front and we're good. So well, let's just get, get this on over here now. So I got this ready to close up. Now that I've got this little connector put in here, this is a test connector to make sure that when I basically push this button that uh, it basically shorts out, which simulates what I'll be doing with that switch up front, if that makes sense. Uh, just to make sure that everything's good. I don't have a dead short across here like I do on the old one across here. By the way, uh, because this is discrete components, I probably will fix this as a backup when I get to it. Um, I used to fix electronics years ago as part 
kind of the beginning of my career. So I'll uh, I'll see what's going on with that. Maybe I'll share that with you, but it's not a big deal. It looks like a pretty simple circuit, actually, when I look in that. So anyway, let's uh, do a test and see if this works. All righty. So I, uh, I put the old case back on just because I've got, it's Velcro, but it's basically for a cushion when it uh, fits in this little bracket that I've made. So I've got it kind of temporarily hooked up. We're gonna see if it works. Um, turn the key on. Good news because this is on the same fuse, that's still working. But uh, let's push the, uh, we got nothing, no status right now. So let's push this on. That just mimics that button on the top of the inverter. And the light went on, so I'm guessing we got action. And we do. It looks like it's working okay. We got 15 volts because I got a charger on the battery right now. Yeah, 115 volts out. So, it's working. Yes. Um, next, we're going to turn on this laptop using this guy, which mimics the button that would be on the laptop to hold down. So hold it down a bit. And, oh, I don't know if you can hear the fan, but I can hear the fan or moving on the, moving on the CPU probably in there. And uh, let's see what we got going on here. We've got, all right, start windows normally. Okay. I never had this before. Got my wireless keyboard going now. We'll just hit uh, enter. And uh, away we go. We are on Windows XP. So that tells you the vintage of this whole thing. Windows XP. Some of you might not even know what a Windows XP is if you're young, young, young. But uh, for a lot of us, I'm sure we know what that is, and I think uh, it's like 2001, 2002 is when the Windows XP came out. So that's a pretty old Windows system, but let's see uh, see what happens here, if she works. Um, all right, not sure what's going on. It's, uh, I think it's going in safe mode right now. Actually, the resolution's kind of all messed up, I think, we'll see. Maybe it's not going in safe mode. I can't remember what I clicked on now. Let's see if it works. Oh, nope, nope, it's not in safe mode. Let me try and get that resolution back to where it needs to be. I'm just gonna switch source. Sometimes that takes it back. Here we go. Ha! I think we're in business. I gotta fix what's going on with the resolution though, but uh, we're working, yes. I can take you through a lot more of it. So now let's back up and running. We are in action. I think I'm gonna do also is take that laptop out and replace the uh, battery that's in it as well, because I know it's probably hard, hardly holding any charge right now. Um, I definitely can look to see how much it's charged on here, but that doesn't mean it has much of holding anything. So we'll uh, oh, screw it up there. We will look on here, open power meter. Yeah, 99% charge, but I bet you if I shut uh, that inverter off, it's not gonna last too long, and I'd like to have a little bit of something on there as well. Um, you can see I have a few things on here. Whoop, cancel that, there we go. Um, got the old DSM link, the new DSM link. Uh, the, the TMO I had on at one time, I'll still do. Um, I have uh, a few other things on here as well. Obviously I could also, um, if I had wireless or I could actually, I did have a uh, tethering thing on my phone years ago when I had this too. And then I could go actually use the old Explorer and Google and all that stuff. Um, Google was pretty young back then. And uh, I'd play for my media, I have a shortcut to music, so I'd play music, I'd stream as well to my deck here. So let's go to ESM link. You can see a little pointer that I got just kind of hanging here. If you're wondering what this is from, you can kind of see from there. That's basically when you used to wear those on your, uh, basically on your, on your pant, uh, pants, basically. You'd have your key card or your uh, ID on this. Well, 
I took that and then I put this little pointer on from a, I think this is from a Palm Pilot from years back. And that's what that's from. So we'll, uh, yeah, I'm really dating myself here. So if we go to UCM Link, we will open that. And uh, we're just going to open it right now. And then I'm going to start the car. I'll just show you how that can operate once it comes up. It should start okay. I was running a little while ago, actually, without the computer. On. There we go. Now we're going to start stream. Sorry, it's a little noisy in here. It's a noisy car. See that it's connecting. That's good news. And, uh, yeah. We're streaming away. So basically, I had eSIM link right here. I could do a log. It was pretty awesome. I could do a log, and then I would basically uh, race the car, check everything out, my logs, run it, do some tweaks, run again. And that's how I fine tuned this. So yeah, for those of you familiar with eSIM link, this is back in like 2005 or whatever I had this. Um, another thing, just to show you the iterations this has been, I still have it in here. That's an old translator before, that I only used uh, before I ever had anything like that, like ECM Link. Um, so that's an old translator for those of you familiar with that. Had all kinds of little tools in here in case of emergencies. Uh, adjust my front shocks. Yeah, and I, I got the cover somewhere, but I always was tweaking these things, so that's why uh, that's like that. But I managed to tune this pretty good um, up to a certain point. Obviously, this can change your timing, but it could change uh, your fuel mixture, which worked really well. And it kind of had some mid, medium, high stuff, so uh, I tweaked it. It's been a while since I've ever played with that, but it's still actually in the car. Let's uh, let's have a look. Still running okay. All right, have a look at the car running. So you know, this thing's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Pretty loud. It's hard to even capture, but I need a piece of paper here. You can see it on my, uh, kind of pulse my hand there a bit. Yeah. It's breathing pretty good, just at idle this thing. Running out here. That's it. So yeah, still got the map on it. I don't have speed density. Works fine, not too worried about it. So uh, let's, uh, let's just shut the car off now. Hey, there you have it. Just thought I'd show you some old school stuff from what I did back there. And obviously uh, what I got going on here and a few things. So I thought you might like to see that. Uh, I'm gonna do a few other things in this car. Probably gonna change out the uh, uh, the cams are pretty aggressive. I might put 272s in. I don't know yet. That fuel pump system, I may uh, take that out and put a in-tank fuel pump just for typical street driving. That's a pretty good system, though, that uh, all-out race car or a lot of racing, or if you want a lot of fuel, which a lot of you guys do, it's a pretty unique system. Um, it's even got an hour meter on it to make sure that you do your intervals on the pump maintenance, which uh, I, I can't remember, but you gotta put a lot of a lot of hours on it before you'd wanna do maintenance, but it's a pretty cool system. So yeah, some of you may want that. Let me know if I do it and we'll, uh, we'll work something out. But anyway, that's probably the two things I'm gonna do this so that I can just kind of take it out and have a little bit more of a daily driver again, calm it down, but it's still, I'm sure, gonna have around 500 horsepower which is really cool. So, uh, for those of you that watch me, thank you, give a thumbs up, like, all those things. Share it, please, if you can. For those of you that uh, just recently tuned in, please subscribe if you could, it helps it out, and you also get you a lot of other things that are coming up, maybe even a lot cooler than this, but uh, this, is, this is pretty cool for nostalgia anyway. So, until the next time, enjoy every day, and always make it right.